All right, let's go over some cat muscles. So we'll start on the back here. Superficial back muscles, this is the clavotrapezius right here. This one over top of the shoulder blade is the acromiotrapezius. And then behind that you have this little triangle shape, which is your spinotrapezius. If we move out on the arm, this is your clavodeltoid on the front anterior side of the arm. And then you have acromiodeltoid and spinodeltoid right there. We also have this little tiny strap-like muscle, which is your levator scapula right here, right there. And that's just kind of going across the back, the shoulder right there. Lateral side of the arm, we've got the lateral head of the triceps brachii right there. And then in between the lateral head of the triceps brachii and the clavodeltoid, we have this muscle, which is your brachialis. So make sure you keep acromiodeltoid and brachialis straight in your head. And then down on the lower portion of the front limb, we have the brachioradialis right there. You may see, if I, if I move this lateral head of the triceps brachii, you may see this on the test. Here's your medial head of the triceps brachii underneath that. I like to show it from the medial side because medial, medial. But you may see it that way. This is your long head of the triceps brachii on the posterior side of the, of the front limb. This large sheet-like muscle is your latissimus dorsi muscle on the flank right there. Let's now flip him over and we'll look at some chest muscles. So this first chest muscle, this is your pecto antebrachialis, goes out across the arm. Then you have your pectoralis major, pectoralis minor, and your xiphi humeralis. And then you have your epitrochlearis over here, which has not been dissected out. There we go. Peel that back, and that's going to reveal the medial head of the triceps brachii, which is right here. And then if we go underneath the pecto antebrachialis, again, still on the medial side, you have your biceps brachii right there. So there's your biceps brachii. There's your medial head of the triceps brachii, and then there's your long head of the triceps brachii. All right, if we go now deep to some of these chest muscles, we reveal the shoulder blade. Let me spin them around real quick. All right, so these muscles right here are the serratus ventralis muscles and they form a nice little fan-like pattern right there. This is the bottom portion of the shoulder blade right here. And if we peel this back a little bit, we can see a couple muscles in here. The first one, this is on the most anterior, or sorry, most inferior side. This is your teres major muscle on the anterior portion of the shoulder blade, or sorry, inferior portion. Okay, here we have the infraspinatus, which is also inferior to the spine on the shoulder blade. If we now go deep on the back, we're going back to the shoulder blade here. If we peel back this acromiotrapezius, it's gonna reveal the top portion of the shoulder blade. This is the supraspinatus. And then of course you've got your bottom portion of the shoulder blade and your infraspinatus, which is underneath the latissimus dorsi. And then here's the, another view of your teres major right there. Okay, on the medial side of the shoulder blade, you have the subscapularis right there, and that one's not in your lab manual, so make sure you know that one. Then you have the rhomboideus capitis muscles, which is this long one that goes from the back of the shoulder blade to the back of the neck. And then rhomboideus muscles, which go from back of the shoulder blade straight across to the spine right there, rhomboideus. Then you have the splenius muscle, which is on the side of the neck, both sides. All right, let's flip them back over again. <clears throat> These neck muscles don't look too good, but we'll go over them. This is going around the neck right here. This is your sternomastoid. What's left of this little muscle right here and here, this is your sternohyoid, right there and there, sternohyoids. Sternothyroid, didn't really see on this cat. 
There's a little muscle on the side of the trachea, right there is your sternothyroid. Then if you go up, this is your mylohyoid in the middle on the inferior portion of the, of the jaw. And then this little upside down V right here, this is your digastric muscle. Cheek muscle right here, a big cheek muscle, this is your masseter muscle. And let's see what else. Oh, if we go back down under here, we forgot the scalenes. Scalenes are running with the axis of the body. Right there is your scalenes running with the axis of the body. Go down to the abdominals. I've taken great care to, to dissect these out so they look pretty good. This is your external abdominal oblique. The muscle fibers are running in this direction. We're going to peel that back. The next layer is your internal abdominal oblique. And these muscle fibers are running more uphill. We're going to peel that back and that's going to reveal the transverse abdominis. And these muscle fibers are running much more in the transverse plane. And then we also have this muscle right here, which runs with the axis of the body, just like that. That's your rectus abdominis. And you, if you look at those muscle fibers, they're running with the axis of the body. So those are your abdominals. And then you have a piece of connective tissue right here in the center on the venter. This is your linea alba. And you're responsible for that one, too. We move out across the hind leg now. We've got this large, super thin, superficial muscle on the medial side. This is the gracilis muscle. We're going to peel that back to reveal some deep muscles. The first one here is your semitendinosus. And I think of that as thin like a tendon. Then you have your semimembranosus, wider like a membrane. And then you have this muscle from here to here. So this is all one muscle. This is the adductor femoris. Then you have the adductor longus muscle, which is the next one, and then the pectineus muscle, which is the next one. And then you have the iliopsoas right here, which runs with the axis of the body. So that's a big muscle that runs with the axis of the body in there. On the anterior side of the hind leg, we have the sartorius, another real thin superficial muscle right there. There's your sartorius. We're going to peel that back, and on the medial view, you have the, qua the uh, quadriceps that you can see. So on the medial side, we have the vastus medialis. In the center, we have the rectus femoris. And on the lateral side, we have the vastus lateralis. Okay, if we go out now to the lateral side of the hind limb. So what you want to do is you want to orient yourself. So this real thin one right here is actually the sartorius, just in, in on the a side view pretty much of it. So underneath that we have this piece of connective tissue right here that you're responsible for. This is called the fascia lata, super tough piece of connective tissue. It's connected to a muscle called the tensor fascia lata. So if the pin is in here, the question will read name this connective tissue. If the pin is in here, the question will read name this muscle. Closer to the center here, we have the gluteus medius, gluteus maximus. We have the caudo femoralis, which is right here. And then we have the biceps femoris, and that's a big posterior muscle right there. Okay, if we move down to the lower hind limb. be able to hold them or not. We have, again, this is our biceps femoris right here. We're going to peel this out of the way a little bit. And we have our tendocalcaneus right here. So attached to the tendocalcaneus, we have two muscles. The larger muscle, this is the calf muscle, this is the gastrocnemius. The smaller muscle is your soleus muscle. So the gastrocnemius and the soleus are both attached to the tendocalcaneus. Next, you have your fibularis muscle, which is going down along the lateral side of the ankle. So there's your fibularis. Next, you have your extensor digitorum longus, and this is moving down across the front side of the, of the leg. So with these lower hind leg muscles, you really want to follow them, look at where they're going. 
And then on the anterior side of the tibia, we have the tibialis anterior right there. Okay, so our last piece of connective tissue that we need is our lumbodorsal fascia, which is this pretty much a diamond shape on the uh, dorsal part of the, of the back right there. Did that get them all? Yeah.